G'day, Glenn Morris here from the Smart Energy Lab again. <laughs> wow, what cool stuff have I got today? It's a Solarx X1 Boost G4. Wow, I've had a lot to do with the uh, Solarx brand over the years and uh, I'm pretty excited by the G4. Well, now the smoke's cleared, let's get into it. So Solarx, as I mentioned, is a company that I've known for a long time in Australia. Uh, ever since the generation one, oh, it must be eight years ago, something like that. So they're actually a company that's been around for a, for a long time. And uh, they've made products, all-in-ones, uh, with custom battery systems. I've got the triple power batteries here on a uh, three-phase G4. But this is the first time I've seen the X1 Boost G4. So let's have a look inside the box. What do we got here? Nice. All right, so uh, I do love a user manual. <laughs> That's really good. And uh, we've got a mounting bracket. There's a mounting bracket. It has some um, positions for, I suspect, security screws on the end there. Um, just trying to work out which way it goes, but here we go. That's the mounting bracket. Uh, we've got some uh, PV connectors, a couple of them, because it's got dual MPPTs, so they provide the plug and socket that match those on the inverter, which is really important. Some wall mounts, stainless steel. We've got our AC uh, socket for connecting the AC power to the unit. And we've got the ubiquitous dongle. Let's have a look inside here. Wi-Fi V3, it says on the outside. I say ubiquitous dongle. It does seem to be the way things are done these days, is using a dongle to provide a um, interface to the cloud or to an app on the phone. So here's the dongle. It's got a uh, type A uh, USB connector on it. And uh, it's got a little little locking mechanism. Looks like you've got to possibly put in a screwdriver to take it out, which is good. Uh, it's got a QR code in the front, which no doubt will take you to somewhere useful. And on the packet itself, uh, it's got a QR code for both the iOS and the Google Play uh, app for this device. So it's getting very simple. Point your phone at a QR code, get the app, and start configuring the system. That's pretty much how it's done these days. And we've got some little screws here. Uh, I've got an RJ45 plug uh, and a uh, what looks like a little lug for earthing terminal. Okay, so let's get into the box. Whoa. Oh my gosh, it's tiny. Who stole my inverter? This is a five kilowatt inverter. Whew, check it out. It is so little. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Might as well cut this open. Well, there's the business end of the unit. Now, it's amazing how small inverters have become. And it's partly because the evolution of inverters with um, high frequency switching, uh, really high tolerance components and high quality design has meant that rather than investing in lots of heavy copper stuff, we're seeing products that are invested in silicon. So high speed switching uh, electronics can really reduce the size of uh, a unit like this. So a five kilowatt inverter, uh, not sure what it weighs, probably tell you that in a second. I'll look it up on the data sheet that I've got here. But let's start with some of the features. Looking on the bottom here, we've got um, our two MPPTs, uh, MPPT1, MPPT2. We've got a dongle port for communicating with the cloud or for setting up through an app. Um, we've also got for a CT or an upstream meter for measuring self-consumption. Uh, and uh, we've got an AC port here. We've also, and this is kind of exciting to me, a lockable DC isolator. No need for an external one. As our Australian standards, uh, the joint standards with New Zealand, but New Zealand hasn't yet ratified them. 
Uh, since the 2014 edition of 5033 Amendments 1 and 2 said that the integrated DC isolator can be used in lieu of an external DC isolator for the PCE. Basically, it means you don't need another box. And I really like that because this is supplied by the manufacturer for this product for its voltage and current ratings, and it's tested to a standard. So it's uh, much more reliable than an external box that you hope you chose the right product for. Great. It's got a um, heat sink on the back here. Looks like it's fully passive cooled. I can't see any ventilation. Uh, and it has a little drain plug here, which is for releasing any moisture or um, pressure inside the unit so it doesn't suck in moisture. It's got a, a display on the front. So here's our little display, which when I power it up, I guess I'll get to see what it looks like. But uh, yeah, it's a really nice little unit. Now let's look at the, uh, the spec sheet for this product. I've got it here on my iPad. Straight away, one of the things that gets me excited by inverters these days is the ability to have more DC power than the uh, AC output rated for. Now you might think, well, what's the purpose? Like, why would you want, in the case of this inverter here, a 200% oversizing ratio with respect to the DC input from the solar to the AC output to the inverter? Well, it won't put out 200% AC power. <laughs> It'll never put out more than its AC rating, five kilowatts. However, not every day is a sunny day. Not every moment of a day is full sun. So when you've got a high oversizing of your PV array, it means that for more of the day, you're producing more AC power. So yeah, it's a really good design principle is to maximize your size of your PV with respect to your inverter. It says it has an inbuilt global MPPT scan or MPP, maximum power point scan. Now, uh, you might not know about this, but there's this uh, sort of phenomenon that occurs when you get partial shading of a solar array. We've got a string of panels and, and there's some shading on part of that array. The IV curve, the current voltage curve of the array will have what's known as a dromedary curve. It'll have a couple of bumps in it. Uh, and uh, those bumps are what we could call uh, local and global maximum power points. Unfortunately, some simple inverters will track up from their open circuit voltage to the first maximum power point they discover, which might just be what we call a global maximum, sorry, a local maximum power point. The global one, which is where you get the most benefit, might be further uh, along the IV curve, but it never gets there. So having a sweep scan is great where you need um, an inverter to be able to always optimize even under partial shading conditions of an array. So well done. Uh, it says user-friendly monitoring. Wow, 10 second level interval uh, of data update. So every 10 seconds, this is transmitting its performance. So especially when you're bedding in a system and you wanna see everything's working properly, having that resolution of data monitoring is really useful and also for fault finding. Uh, it's got a quick and easy configuration via Wi-Fi and an app, which is pretty standard these days. Uh, in terms of safety and reliability, what are we looking at here? Uh, we've got an AC-DC built-in Type 2 surge protection device, and that's an optional extra, apparently. I'm not sure if this unit has that, uh, but it also has IV curve diagnostic support. Now, what's that? Funnily enough, that same IV curve that I was talking about, the one that you can sometimes have a local and a global maximum power point on, can also identify when there is a problem with the panels. So if you have a faulty panel, um, you've got one that's got a, a damaged bypass diode or some other uh, high resistance within the array, it can identify that by looking at the IV curve. So it's basically bringing a bit of smarts, let's use that term AI into the analysis of how the system performs. Uh, there's an optional um, rapid shutdown uh, device. So very useful if you're in the US market where rapid shutdown is mandatory. Uh, within the array, you've got to shut down below 60 volts within I think 10 seconds. Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, <laughs> all those USA viewers, uh, we don't have that requirement in Australia. And it's also got a potential arc fault uh, uh, protection. So and be able to detect that there actually is a fault in the array. So um, inbuilt export control, we kind of expect that uh, these days, just about every DNSP, every utility, as we sometimes call them, uh, will have some limitations on exports. So export control is pretty, pretty uh, basic. 
Um, there's also some other options such as home EV charger and heat pump solutions that are adaptable. I don't know much about those, so I'll leave that to, to others to investigate. And a master-slave parallel solution using Modbus support. So I noticed there's a comms port here, which no doubt can be used for Modbus. Master slave or you know manager, worker, whatever terms you like to use, uh, basically is a way of one device doing all the measurement, such as exchange with the grid, and controlling all the other devices. So when you've got multiple inverters, you've got say two of these, you don't need two upstream CTs or, or power meters, just the one. So the X1 Boost G4 comes in a whoa, huge range of sizes, everything from a, a 2.5 um, kilowatt right up to a uh, 6 kilowatt. Now this is the five unit. It depends on what sort of market you're in, um, what's the optimum size, but in Australia, around the five to six is pretty much the standard. Um, this five kilowatt unit can take 10 kilowatts of solar panels, uh, up to 600 volts, maximum open circuit voltage, and it's got a very low startup voltage of just 50 volts. And that means very first light in the day, this system turns on and starts working. That's really great. A wide MPPT range of 40 to 560 volts. Now, let's get to the bit that I always get excited about because it's been a problem for some inverters, is the maximum in short, uh, short circuit PV input rating. Now what that means is these plugs and sockets here on the uh, MPPTs are rated to 22 amps under fault conditions. That means that if there's a fault in the inverter for some reason, the PV array can actually circulate up to 22 amps through it. But our standard ASNZS5033 requires a 25% safety margin on the ISC of the module, or the array I should say. So if you've got a 22 amp maximum ISC on, on the input to this, and I have to get my calculator out for this. Uh, let's have a little look. I can multiply by 0.8, which is the reciprocal of multiplying by 1.25 for those mass nerds out there. And that means I can have a panel connected to these inputs with a maximum of 17.6 amps of short circuit current at standard test conditions. That'll take you right up to the utility size panels. So, yep, that's really good. This uh, this inverter can take a wide range of panels, everything from your smaller resi panels up to your large area utility panels. Well, I'm not gonna go through every single detail in this, uh, but uh, some of the things that drew my attention was the fact that it's got natural cooling, so no fans. So that means really low maintenance, basically, you know, just keep the dust off it, I suppose. Um, it's got a, a display, uh, the app for all the details, and uh, the the fact that it's got arc fault circuit interruption and um, auxiliary AC power supply options uh, and an integrated DC switch. Wow. And of course, it meets all the Australian standards, uh, ASNZS 4777 Part 2 2020. So there you go. This is the SolarX X1 Boost G4. <laughs> Get one on your wall soon. Okay, thanks for watching. Check it.